So as we all know that the place where I am presently based, which is Cebu, Philippines, was recently affected by the super typhoon Odette just a few days before Christmas. And as a result, we had no electricity, no, we have no water, and more so we have no internet connection. We all know that people in some places during the time of the typhoon were actually lining up for water and gas. And some of these patients or some of these people lining up were without mask. And therefore, it seemed that the pandemic of COVID-19 was lost and forgotten. Likewise, with Christmas coming around, when some malls started to open, you can see fully that these malls are packed with people. And I worry so much about the threat of another wave of COVID-19 infection. So as you can see nowadays, the world is now being inundated by what we call as a tsunami of new Omicron variant. So what then is the latest on this new variant and how it can possibly affect us in the year 2022? Let's watch this. We know all over the world in the news now from Europe to United States, cases have been on the rise. That's that the Guardian reported that on December 24, Omicron has already infected one in 35 people across the country. And in London, one in 20. And this is based on random swab tests taken in the community. In fact, the Office for National Statistics estimated that at most 3% of the people in England had COVID between December 13 and 19. While in Denmark, the infection rate has been doubling every two days. So of the country's Omicron patients, of note, 75% were already fully vaccinated, meaning we continue to be infected. And 9% already had received booster shot. So we have to remember, that around 80% of the Danish population is already fully vaccinated. Now, the U.S. government, on the other hand, reported last week that 73% of the new infections nationwide are from Omicron variant, with a seven-day rolling average for the U.S. COVID-19 cases climbed up to 160,000 cases per day, which is more than double the average that in November. So the rising cases of this Omicron infection may be related to the fact that the variant indeed has successfully evaded some of our body's immune responses. It has been known that Omicron as a virus in terms of variant appears to be better at evading antibodies generated by some of the COVID-19 vaccines. Although we are seeing a reduction in the neutralization antibodies, we know that we have a second layer of protection which remains intact, and that's the memory B and T cells. And that almost all data shows that T cells remain intact, and that this second pillar of our immune response can prevent the onset of severe disease secondary to this Omicron infection by attacking these infected human cells. In fact, we have some good news in the sense that a South African study recently has suggested that Omicron variant is transmissible, but it causes less severe illness than earlier variants. And the study also found that people who were hospitalized with Omicron in October to November were 70% less likely to develop severe disease than those admitted with Delta between April and November. So combining all data together, therefore, our data suggests a positive story of a reduced severity of Omicron compared to other variants. However, I have to remind everyone that COVID infections 
no matter how mild, is still considered highly contagious, especially this highly transmissible Omicron variant. And therefore, it's not therefore surprising that recently Christmas travel chaos deepened as more U.S. flight cancellations neared almost 1,800 for the Christmas weekend, disrupting travel on one of the busiest periods of the year as Omicron fueled the wave of COVID cases, triggered air crew shortages. Pilots, flight attendants, and other employees manning the airports have been calling in sick or have to quarantine after exposure to COVID-19. Now, while Omicron appears to be able to evade some of the defenses offered by the two doses of our present COVID-19 vaccines like the Pfizer and Moderna, however, we know that booster shots do offer some protection against infection and has been shown to be highly effective in preventing serious illness, which is one of the thrusts why we vaccinate people, meaning while the virus to infect someone who have been vaccinated, the booster dose do protect people against severe infections. So booster shots, therefore, seem to be the next best solution at the present. In fact, the UK Health Security Agency recently announced that the Oxford, AstraZeneca, Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna vaccines, all as booster shots, do protect against Omicron. Although less than they did against Delta, but the protection is there. It is of note, however, that just like any other shots, the antibody levels do wane over time. So that this booster effectiveness generally decreased to between 60 to 70% protection at two to four weeks after given the shot, and it can go down as low as 35 to 45% at 10 weeks. Now, for now, the Philippine government, as we know, is allowing adults to get their COVID booster shots three months after the last dose of their two-dose COVID-19 vaccine, cutting in half the six-month waiting time. And this is good news for those who want to be protected, as we now have the fourth Omicron case in the Philippines from a person who traveled from the United States. So what then do we look forward to the year 2020? Is some hope to a world facing a new wave of COVID-19 infection? Hopefully this would end with the development of a second and a third generation vaccines and further development of some pills or antimicrobial treatments and other innovations that we can take when we get this COVID-19 infection. I hope, therefore, for the coming year that everyone's hope that eventually we can consign this COVID-19 disease to be a relatively mild disease that can easily be prevented, that can easily be treated, and that we soon should be able to cope easily with the disease in the future. I hope everyone for a happy new year. Again, this is Dr. Jerry Tan. See you again soon.